Hello folks. Well, today's project is to build a snow plow blade mount for the Bobcat. The bucket is just too much work for light snows. Snows less than six inches are much easier done with the blade. Deep snows, you need that bucket because you need to lift the snow up and pile it someplace else. So, I wanted to see what was needed to put a blade on this Bobcat. Here's the release. You pull this thing up and you release two latches that hold the bucket on, the bobcat, and you can take the bucket off and simply set it aside. And what you got is the front flange mount uh, on the bobcat itself. And you can see how the bucket attaches to the bobcat. There's two, there's two lips that slip over the top of the mount and then two latches that come inside and then there's two uh, protrusions welded on the bucket to hold it hold it on permanently. Here's what the bobcat mount looks like without the bucket. Now the bucket adds a lot of weight to the front of that bobcat and that was a little bit of a concern to me but it seems to work okay. Here's a closer view of the front mount with the two latching mechanisms out. I bought a Craftsman garden tractor last year with a blown engine in it. It came with a blade and a bunch of stuff. Here's the blade that came with it. And then the mount for the blade that fits on the Craftsman tractor also came with it. What I used was the front triangular pivoting portion of this mount on the tractor. And, the, and that piece of steel you see is really channel. And I built a piece of channel out of, out of two pieces of angle iron. All I had in angle iron to make the, the side mounts was galvanized. In any event, here's the side mounts with the holes cut in them for the latching pins. And I drilled and filed those holes out. Actually, it was pretty easy and made sure that these pieces of angle iron would fit flat up against the bobcat mount. Then I welded the, it, it, there, there is the piece of the galvanized iron with the, with the latches fitting through it, just to show you how, how close it fits, and my marks on it. Here's, here's the complete piece ready to go. Notice that I've also welded a piece of angle iron at the top to hold it over the top of the, uh, <laughs> the bobcat flange. <coughs> These were galvanized pieces. Galvanized is not easy to weld and it creates a, a very ugly weld. In any event, here I am welding those galvanized pieces together. Here's both pieces on the tractor as they would fit once the snowplow blade is attached to the tractor. Uh, here's, here's just another view of that, of that same thing to kind of give, to kind of give you a little idea of, of the detail involved. And then here's the piece of angle iron welded to the actual top of the mount. Then I capped that angle iron so that it wouldn't slip off either direction. The next thing I did was I built the snowplow blade mount out of two pieces of channel, uh, out of two pieces of angle iron to create a channel. I filed the, the grooves in this angle iron before I butt welded these things together. Both top and there's no groove in the bottom. The bottom is just a, a piece of 16 gauge so that the, the um, blade pivot would tilt back and forth in it. Now here's me welding that piece again and you can see this isn't galvanized. It welds a little bit easier than the, and nicer than the galvanized stuff. So what I ended up with was a, <coughs> a short piece of a channel that I could bolt the blade mount to and the blade angle lever uh, slipped into the, into the holes as well and, would, and would, would, would rotate back and forth. Bottom view of the blade mount and the top view of the blade mount with the gussets made from the 45 degree angles I cut off the end of that big angle iron um, main mounting bracket there. Then I tilted the, the bracket 45 degrees right and 45 degrees left and made sure that the, the clearances were okay. I also did this once it was on the tractor. Here's, here's the other direction. There's my welder in the background. It's a Miller welder, 110 volt, up to quarter inch, great. Don't buy a Harbor Freight welder. Here's the whole assembly, blade assembly, ready to be welded together on the Bobcat itself. I, I, I spot welded it on the Bobcat before I did anything. First of all, I made sure both sides were square and that those angle irons fit flat up against the flange. And then I clamped both pieces to the main, the main angle iron that held the mount. mount. Both sides fairly square. Not not real square, but fairly square. And it's back to the welder, well and galvanized. So the, the, the main piece of angle iron that holds the mount and the galvanized sides, the main piece is not galvanized, the sides are galvanized. I, 
I cleaned these with a wire brush, tried to get most of the galvanized stuff off, and it, it seemed to do a little better. The wells look a little nicer, but still they're, they're uh, spattered. Here's the spring that holds the latch that controls the pivot in place. There's a bottom view of that same thing with a roll pin that goes through that latch so that it pivots on that roll pin. Now I cut all these grooves before I did any welding and I cut them with a, with a, a four inch angle grinder. There's the whole thing put together. You grab that latch, pull it back, and you can rotate that front thing 45 degrees either direction or put it uh, uh, vertical. There's the whole blade mount ready to fit onto the bobcat. That's a front view of it. There it is on the bobcat. And the two, the two bolts that stick up out of that thing on, on the left and right hand side are the stops for the blade so you can control the, the, the ang angle of the blade. Uh, there's a side view of the same thing, getting ready to put the blade on, on the thing. Didn't paint anything, I wanted to test it out. There it is, there's a, there's a view of, of the latch holding the thing onto the, onto the bobcat. Uh, Right side, there's the left side. So what we're going to do now is, uh, oh, there, there's the top. Just a little view of the detail. Remember, I welded a piece to the side so that it wouldn't slip off the top. Uh, and now I'm going to get ready to put the blade on this whole mechanism. Okay, there's the blade. I slip it over the, the rod on one end. Slip it, bring it over, slip it over the rod on the other end, and attach two hairpin clips, one on each side of the blade. Here's, here's the, the left side of the blade, then let's look at the right side of the blade, just attaching the hairpin clips. That's all that holds that blade on there, aside from the spring. There's a blade stop, so you can tip the blade completely back, and it stops at those, at those stops. Not a function of the spring tension. The next thing you do is, is slip the spring through the main pivot bolt, and then stick the spring bolt up through the top of the blade, and tighten it down. I tightened it down pretty tight so they have a lot of spring tension. You'll see in the video I, I, I made an attempt to, to pop the blade and, and, and you can see the bobcat shoot up in the air. Here's the blade pulled back against the spring right against the stops. And you can adjust these stops to, to control the angle of the blade. Basically, we're all put together and here's a photo of, of the blade on the bobcat. It's wide enough so that the bobcat fits the path that the blade plows. How about that? Uh, here's, here's the view of the back side of the blade. Then I tilted the blade while it was on the tractor both 45 degrees left and 45 degrees right. And fortunately, it snowed today, so I got to go out and test this thing. And the video that follows is actual the testing of this blade in, in trying to figure out how to use it. It works fairly well. Here goes the video.